Retro gaming is a big deal right now. Just check this out. Recently a copy of Super Mario Bros. 3 sold at auction for $156,000. That's the second time this year that the world record has been set for the most expensive game sold at auction. Now most of us don't have that kind of money to spend on these collectibles, but still a lot of us are collecting classic cartridge games and emulating them if not, or picking up remakes, reboots, mini retro consoles and whatnot. I myself have been getting into retro gaming quite a bit recently and it's had me wondering just what exactly is retro gaming? What does that mean? Is there a certain age that a game has to be to be considered retro? How old is retro? Well, actually it's a little bit more complicated than that and there's no real definitive answer or age that a game has to be to be considered retro. The word is really subjective. When I hear the word retro, for whatever reason, my mind goes to the 80s. And I'm actually too young to remember the 80s, believe it or not, but perhaps that's why. It feels like the 80s was just a long time ago. It feels like it had its own sense of style and pop culture and stuff that is just so different from what I've grown up knowing. But now as I'm getting older, a lot of the things I have grown up with from the 90s, the early 2000s, that's all considered retro now. I was reminded of how old I am the other day when I was showing my family the retro pie console I put together recently. We were playing some N64 and Super NES games. My nephew, who's 14, he was asking me if it could play any newer games. And I was telling him, well, the newest games it can play are the Dreamcast and the PSP. He's like, I don't know what those are. I'm like, wow, actually, yeah. The Dreamcast is more than 20 years old now. The PSP is more than 15 years old. To me, I'm thinking, oh yeah, these are relatively newer than the other games we were playing, but these are still pretty old. Retro? Yeah, I guess so. So in the world of reselling, they have certain words to describe how old an item is, right? So there's vintage, which should be at least 20 years old. There are antiques, which are at least 100 years old. The word retro can be used rather subjectively though. A lot of people like to say it's around 15-20 years, but it really depends. Merriam-Webster defines the word retro as relating to, reviving, or being the styles and especially the fashions of the past, fashionably nostalgic or old-fashioned. Dictionary.com more simply defines it as of or designating the style of an earlier time. So in this case, the 15 to 20 year mark really doesn't cut it. We can see if retro is anything that comes from the past, is modeled after the past, or invokes nostalgia. You know, it's easy to see why it would be so hard to determine if something should be called retro and why you and I might have different definitions or might come up with different answers as to whether something's retro or not. In fact, there are lots of games coming out all the time now that are styled after those 8-bit, 16-bit aesthetics, etc. You know, using graphics, sound, gameplay based on those older games. So technically, a game that comes out tomorrow could be considered retro today, making this whole thing much more complicated. So when looking at generations, where do we draw the line? What is considered retro? Is the PS4 retro now that the PS5 is out? Maybe for you, you would say yes, and that's fine. There's no wrong answer here. And maybe I would say no, and I would say no because PS4 is still in production. New games are still coming out for it. It's still supported. It's still current, despite its successor being out already. But then if you ask me about the PS3, well, then it gets a little more complicated. The PS3 has been out of production since 2017. It's in the past now, right? There are no more games coming out for it. It's done. But 2017 wasn't that long ago, honestly. I really would have a hard time calling it retro. It seems to me like still a pretty modern system. So I guess in my mind for these kind of gray areas between modern and retro, I have to ask myself, which side does it more closely fall on? The PS3, I'd say it's more of a modern console than a retro console, so I would not call it retro. PS2 on the other hand, 
that gets even more complicated. I think that's where I draw the line. I think at PS2, GameCube, Xbox, I think I would label those as retro now. Those all came out around 20 years ago and they're more modern than the NES. But in the grand scope of things compared to what we have today, there have been some real, real technological changes in graphics and hardware and even just the state of the industry and the way the way that we get games and experience games now it seems like there have been some serious changes so i would draw the line there i think and call those retro consoles at this point even though it kind of pains me to say and it just reminds me how old i'm getting but those are just my opinions you know i tried to be as objective as i could about it but really it's just it's based on my perspective and my experience of you know living over the period of years that i've lived and playing the games i've played throughout my life and no doubt influenced by my own senses of nostalgia i'd love to hear your opinions on the matter though what do you consider retro where do you draw that line between modern and retro what is a retro console what does it mean to you do you agree that a retro inspired game that comes out tomorrow should be considered a retro game? That's a tough one. Anyways, let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, feel free to give it a thumbs up. That means a lot to me. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more content. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.